Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, just to take this opportunity to thank Advocate Mahere um, for the introductory remarks. We are excited. We are happy. You are aware that uh, we have just uh, completed our very important election, a by-election over the weekend, an election that was called for on account of the recalls that were made to certain of the members and also occasioned by dates in the House of Assembly. So that the election came at a time when we were still very, very young. We are only two months old. The yellow baby. But guess what? We have managed to defeat party formed in 1963, another one formed in 1999. What we have now is 19 seats out of the contested 28. A resounding victory, an emphatic and landslide show by the citizens of Zimbabwe. We want to thank all the citizens who have shown us that from nothing we are now at number 90. It did not been for rigging and other shenanigans that we saw, particularly in the countryside. We'd be talking of uh, almost uh, 26 out of 28. But tell you what, the citizens are very clear. They've made a bold statement, and that statement is that they believe in the triple C the citizen coalition for change. There is a new kid on the block. It's a new game. This is our first victory, our first election, and we've done so well. I've heard some people saying that, ah, no, you retained your seat. We had no seats. We're on zero. Mm -hmm. We are starting afresh. Zanu PF and Mr. Mnangagwa took the seats we had in 2018 and gave them to MDC Alliance. MDC Alliance did not win any seat. ZANU PF, I'm not so sure if they won anything, but what we know is that we are now on number 19. And we are on this march to a two thirds majority in parliament come 2023. <coughs> Citizens have done very well. And we thank a lot of people who worked from no results, from nothing, but the citizens. Citizens, we want to thank you. You did it. We have done it countrywide. We are now standing on the municipal elections over 75 councillors out of the 120 that were contested for. That's not a mean achievement. We have done very well. And we are excited. Against all odds, you know that with a lot of challenges, there was violence. We even lost one of our members, Bonemi Mwe. Some of our supporters were beaten. Mazimaba is a case in point arrested. And many others were injured in Arare, in Kwekwe, and in the various parts of our country. One of our candidates in Mashonale and Central, their homestead destroyed. We had problems with the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission around the issue of uh, the voter score. We still have those problems. Yes, we have had a landslide. But that does not move away from the fact that the elections in this country need fundamental reform around the voters' law, the credibility of the voters' law, around the issues of making sure that results are managed in a better way, polling stations are not subjected to the violence, intimidation that we have seen. ZANU-PF people do not believe in a free vote. They do not believe in the liberation agenda. They do not believe that citizens have the right to demonstrate their will and express themselves in a free and fair election. That's why they are abusing our traditional leaders, where the case in Mtasa and other rural areas, on the farm, farming areas, people are told that if you exercise your right to vote, you are inviting hazard, risk, and loss of life. That's not what the liberation struggle was for. It was one man, one woman, one vote. And that is what we want to see. People must be allowed and be permitted to vote for a part of their choice. If that happened, we're going to have a 100% victory. Because citizens are ready for change. 
citizens are ready for victory. And I can tell you that what we have just done is a teaser, an introduction, and putting the nation and the world on notice that Triple C is the next government. There is nothing that will stop us from forming the next government. Yes, challenges are there. ZEC still has to reform. Electoral reforms have to be implemented. And we have said those reforms have to be put in place. That's why we have written to SADAC and asking SADAC to help us and also to have a political dialogue within the country around the reforms that we would want to see instituted and put in place. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, thank you for covering the elections. And thank you for doing a fantastic job. We really appreciate it. We want to thank you for what you did, and we continue to count on you for covering these elections. Going forward, we are pushing for electoral reform. The journey has begun. The March 2023 has begun. We are on number 19. We want to get a two-thirds majority. We are on zero in terms of the actual vote on the presidential election. But we know that the presidential candidate we are going to have at 2.6 million. So we count on that 2.6 million going forward and want to make sure that we have a 6 million mark vote in the next election. Zimbabweans, you can do it. Register to vote. Those who didn't vote in the by-election, we understand. It. You said you wanted a general election that will change your life and that will change your situation and change the government. This is the opportunity. Do it. Register to vote. We want to thank you. God bless you. And we thank God for the journey because on our own, we could not do it. But because God is in it, the citizens are in it, victory is certain. And we'll win Zimbabwe for change in 2023. Thank you. Thank you. So before the president goes, we're going to take a few questions. As usual, please identify yourself and the media house you come from and then ask one question so that we can take as many as possible. Thank you. You can just indicate with a show of hands. Yes, Columbus. Yes, um, Columbus Mavunga, VOA TV. Um, Mr. Mr. What, what lesson or what lessons do you learn from this um, by-election going forward in, in 2023? Well, ultimately, citizens are the final authority. Citizens are the final court of appeal. This was a correction of the mistakes made by various organs of the state conniving against us. You know what happened in parliament, the illegal recalls, you know what happened with other political parties conniving with zanu -PF to try and decimate and destroy the people's project. But the citizens are ultimately the umpires and they've said enough is enough on the mistakes by Mr. Mnangagwa and the sidekick. Enough is enough on the mistakes by the courts and the final court of all courts is the will of the people. And the people have expressed themselves. They have said what we want is the face of change. Citizens know their leader. Citizens know what they want and who they want. And they have made an emphatic statement. Even in the rural areas, forget about those huge figures. zanu -PF is not capable of being voted for. All those figures are a fiction. And we have to deal with that because there are also gaps we need to deal with around how we are observing elections, particularly in the countryside, and also the issue of the traditional leaders and their roles in elections. Those are issues we are dealing with, particularly in terms of the countryside. But this whole lie that the countryside belongs to zanu -PF is a is a hoax. It's a fallacy. We are very strong in the rural areas. That's why people are intimidated. No majority party intimidates its own supporters. There is no violence that is used by strong people. Weak people resort to violence. That's why ZANU's instrument of choice in dealing with the electorate and citizens is violence, because they are not supported, particularly in the countryside. Look at what they did in Binga. Bicycles, balls. Yes, there's nothing wrong in distributing food. But people are not only carrying stomachs during election time. Remember them all the time. Don't go to them during the by-election. Balls are not only necessary during elections. They need water all the time. That's why we are saying enough is enough. And with all that, all the things they did in St. Mary's and all the constituencies, they did not make it. Thank you. Yes, sir? Uh, if I can secure your okay, yes. um, I, I want to clarify from you, uh, Mr. Misa. When you say that you have issues with sex and you have engaged sex, what form of engagement are you talking about? Because on Friday when we asked if there were any queries, any complaints from any political uh, players, both the chief election officer and uh, Commissioner Mangwana said that they did not receive any form of complaint from any.
any political player except for Mzinga Makarani. So when you say you have engagement, can you just tell us what, what form of engagement you need to talk about? Well, thank you, uh, Ethan. In fact, that's part of the evidence of the insincerity of Zay. You know, we, we wrote to Zay several letters around voters. For, they also responded to us. But in their response, they were not giving any answer that is solid. They were wish wash not committing to anything, and we have problems with that. So the fact that they would want to misrepresent even to you as a journalist is a fundamental issue that marks and demonstrates insincerity on their part. ZEC were supposed to pass various tests, one of which is sincerity. Another one is integrity, the, honor the honorable conduct of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. We have not seen that. They were supposed to also pass the constitutional test in terms of following the constitution on all the requirements. Look at the complaints we had around the ballot paper itself, how the pictures appeared and how our logo appeared. You can see that there's tomfoolery. You can see that there is deliberate mischief on the part of Zek. And these are the issues we have put on record. The issue of the voters' vote, the issue of our campaigns being disrupted by the police as is required by the law. But there hasn't been any good news from Z. People have had their names being moved from one constituency to another. Numerous complaints around people being unilaterally and illegally shifted from one polling station to another. It's a big issue that we are going to even raise. They know our complaints. They know that we continue to raise them. And we will continue to raise those because Z is our constitutional body it is our collective referee. We cannot allow them to choose one side or to be biased because they are required by the Constitution and they have to pass that constitutionally test. Right. Is there a woman? Yes, ma'am. Uh, from New Road. Uh, you've spoken about rigging in the country that we have particular issues, particular constituencies in this is our family and particular examples. Very particular examples, uh, Rutendo, we have Mutasa, Ruimbo, uh, we have Mutasa constituents, there was a by-election there, a ward. And there's evidence to that effect. Our local member of parliament, um, uh, Sarwaka, even raised it with the police. It's on record. We even went to the police to report what was happening. The whole village being asked to claim that they cannot write, they cannot read, you know. And the chief was there, the local village aid was there, looking at people, people know that when they make their choice, they are going to then lose their peace. So we can't have an election. Each election, people lose their life, people lose their freedom, people lose their peace. That's not the essence of elections. Just one case in point. We have cases of um, just a South, you know, where the guy Sunga was a candidate. The farming areas there. Almost a big problem. Wenez is a case in point. Chiri. But we have an answer to that. And we are coming to a situation where if the police are not willing to help, as they, they are supposed to do, we will have mechanisms to make sure that citizens in the villages are also protected lawfully and peacefully so that they are able to exercise their right to vote. Thank you. Yes, sir. I just wanted to find out from you. Um, there, there are seats that have been regarded as safe for the opposition in urban areas. Um, for, for instance, Epworth uh, and other council seats that were lost uh, uh, by predominant media opposition uh, in, in this case. Uh, are you worried about this urban vote that tilted towards Zanu PF in this by -election? I can't speak on behalf of the other opposition political parties, but uh, we are a new kid on the block. We have lost nothing. If anything, we have gained. From zero, we are now. 19 members of parliament who are going to paint the parliament yellow. Mm. That's not a small achievement. Those in zanu PF will tell you that this is not small, including winning in Kwekwe, Mr. Mnangagwa's own backyard. That's where he stays, and we are glad that his neighbors voted for us. That's a big statement. Mm. And we want to thank the people of Kwekwe mm. for showing that they do not have confidence in their own neighbor, and they've supported us. That's a big victory for us. Marwan and we were not allowed to come back. We did fantastically and phenomenally well. And even in the various wards where people were throwing around, you know, trinkets and trappings, you know, to citizens, 
we did very well. 77, then about that figure out of 120. You can't say that this is not a big victory. This is being won by people whom they were dismissing as having no plan. Now, if you are, if you have no plan and you are able to win 19 seats against people who have a plan, then you must be a serious player. And we are serious players. As I told you, we are the next government. We have done very well. We swept, we swept all the, the, the we swept all the, 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 the seats that are in Blawayo, all the seats that are in Masuingo, all the seats uh, in Arare, except of course one or two, where we have just loaned, you know, uh, on, on account of our of our magnanimity. Mm. Because democracy is that you must also allow others, you know, to feel the fairness of competition. And and we are okay with that. Yes, sir. And then I'll come to you. Uh, Chawanda Bruce from the descent. Hey, before you ended your, your, your initial speech, you mentioned that you, that's why you seek help from Sadak. That's why you need political dialogue. Who do you want to dialogue with? Well, it's a citizen dialogue, Bruce. It's not necessarily a party to party dialogue. It's a citizen dialogue. But there are key parties that have a majority show. And, and you know that uh, ZANU PF is one of the key players from a historical perspective, but also from a political reality point of view. And we are the only other party that is big enough to then have that conversation and have a serious course of action for the nation. It takes two to tango. We are saying dialogue is important. Dialogue around electoral conditions and the reforms that we would want to see so that we do not have another disputed election. We still are not happy with this by-election. So it's magnanimity in victory. We do appreciate that we won, but winning in an unfair election does not make the election free and fair. We still need the election to be free and fair. So even in victory, there has to be dialogue, a pre-election, post-election part, in agreement on the nature and character of an election that we are going to have, so that we agree on what happens to those who are going to win, what happens to those who are also going to help the winners, those who do not make it. So that's a very simple and straightforward dialogue that we want. But suffice to say, we also want to thank, I mean, their police officers, our military, and even some of the Z officers who are very professional. We salute them. They've done a fantastic job. Thank you for saving your country. Thank you for being patriotic. It's not all Z efforts that are bad. Some of them are very nice and they are good and edible for the nation, for citizens, to enjoy their rights, the right to vote. So we appreciate them. Dialogue is about the bad aspects of our electoral playing field. You know that in 2018, all the electoral observer missions indicated that we have problems with our elections. They identified a catalog of issues. We need to tick the boxes on all those issues, but there has to be political dialogue so that 2023 is not disputed. And once we have that election, whoever wins, must be supported. If ZANU PF win, which is impossible, who will support them? But let's have a, for, a free, proper, legitimate, and fair election. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, privilege, Mr. Amiri, uh, not today. Um, first is on uh, the voter turnout uh, for the weekend election. Um, some analysts have said that uh, this was more or less like a teaser what is to come in 2023. How are you going to ensure that you mobilize people to vote as political actors? Uh, because citizens, um, like we saw over the weekend, the numbers were a bit low in terms of, uh, even if you go to a polling station, one may have 1,000 registered uh, voters, but you have a turnout of 200. And then um, going forward, people see um, was uh, walking from January without uh, leadership, um, elected leaders. When uh, do we hope to see um, the Congress coming and uh, having uh, leaders coming to take? A party or a movement without leadership does not make the kind of gains we make. We have leadership. <laughs> and citizens know their leaders. Are you suggesting that I'm not a leader? <laughs> 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 Mr. 
Yes, we have a leadership, and we are very focused on that leadership. <laughs> but of course, we have internal processes around democracy, making sure that the citizens have a right to choose their own leaders. Because we have said citizens first, citizens at the center. So they will determine at the appropriate time who they want to see in leadership. I'm a caretaker leader, together with the team I lead with. You see them around. What we have not just done is to announce, because we don't need to announce our opponents, our structure and who we are. Because once beaten twice shut, we know them, we will not do certain things prematurely. We want to do things in a proper manner. And we are going to do it at the appropriate time. So yes, you will see there is a solid leadership structure, and you will see institutional structures are in place, and you will see. I mean, you would be performing miracles if we didn't have leadership and we do the, the way we did. It shows you that there is solid and empathic leadership. And, and, and I think that answers your second question. The first one, uh, around the issue of the voter turnout. Look, this is a by-election. A by-election is always generally against those who are in the authority and for the incumbent because of a number of reasons. People don't feel the incentive to vote in a by-election as opposed to a general election. Wait and see. The general election is going to give you the highest turnout. This one, yes, People did very well, actually, when you look at all the historical, uh, you know, uh, by-elections. People don't generally participate in by-elections, but we are so happy that uh, enough was done and a lot of good work was done. So, yes, you will see. And we are doing everything to make sure that when the by-election comes, we do very well. In fact, we have been asking all our supporters to tell us, they say, look, general election, yes, because we can change a government, because we can change a leadership, because we can change our lives. By election, fine. We can change our representatives, but not a government. So the impetus and the, the motivation is not as high as in a general election. So yes, let's wait and see. But I can tell you that we, we are doing everything within our power to make sure that uh, things done are done properly. Okay, I'm going to take one more question. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Sean Moyo, two six three times. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, the first one being, um, there are MPs in Parliament currently who went in under the NDC alliance but they are loyal to you. For example, we have uh, Honorable George Kala, Honorable Joanna Mamonde, and such. We are continue to stay in Parliament and uh, thereby giving access, access to funding to the NDC alliance or to for what we issue going forward. And secondly, we have heard talk about um, inviting the UN to observe the next elections. Is that your actual standpoint? And, uh, what the likelihood of that happening in the country? Thank you very much on the two very important questions. Um, I just want to say, in 2018, the citizens of Zimbabwe gave a mandate to representatives at various levels. At presidential level, they gave us a mandate. That's why the election was disputed in the Constitutional Court. And we still have that dispute because it has not been resolved. We, we did not agree with the Constitutional Court in giving Mr. Mnangagwa a mandate when the citizens gave us a mandate. We also had representatives at parliamentary level and council level who were chosen for five years. We have no right to choose, then say to those people, step down or stand down. They have a mandate that they were given by the citizens and it's expiring in 2022. If anybody chooses to record them or do any further movement is for oppression fighters and war veterans, this is your movement. It's a movement for all the citizens. So yes, uh, they are in parliament. We are not going to go there and say, you are, you are going to be MDC. You are going. That's not our business. Our business is that we now have 19 members of parliament. Those we can account for. Those who are under the citizen banner, under another different party, is there as citizens. And we are not going to tamper with them. So we will not delve into those matters. Then, of course, the issue of the United Nations. Yes, we feel that if we don't agree as citizens through a dialogue around the elections we are going to be having, there is need for us to go to those international bodies to help us do what is required. We must remember that there's a difference between observation and monitoring. So we are exploring those different options in the context of inviting the UN, you know? It's not a ZANU-PF affair, it's a national affair. 
ZANPF represents just a portion of the population. We represent the greater part. And therefore, we need this conversation around the reforms that we need to see in the country so that we have a legitimate government in 2024. Right. So all that remains, ladies and gentlemen, is for me to thank you very, very much on behalf of the Triple C for making time to come uh, today. We obviously thank the citizens who continue <coughs> to have faith in us and believe in us and support our cause. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, colleague. God bless you, and thank you. Thank you for coming to us at a short space, within a short space of time. I mean, we just gave this announcement, I think, yesterday, yes. and thank you for your kindness. We really appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you. Welcome.